the 1920s. Table of Contexts. Theme 1. What are inventions? Theme 2. The radio. Theme 3. The automobile. And Theme 4. The snowmobile. What are inventions? The definition of an invention is something such as a device or a process that has been created or made up or the process of creating or making up something, of figuring out a way to do something. Some examples of inventions are, there are three topics that we're going to be discussing today. So, the radio, the automobile, and the snowmobile. The radio. The radio was considered the greatest communication invention of the 1920s. The radio was intentionally used during World War I for the soldiers to communicate to those who were at sea. When the war finished, it became a household object within multiple houses. The radio was used to broadcast voices, news, music, all over the country. The radio was a cheap way to get entertainment from the comfort of your very own home. There were no tubes of the radio, but a crystal to listen to the radio. The people used a fine wire, which is called a whisker, and moved that over the surface of a crystal. The sounds from the radio crystal were so quiet that you needed headphones to hear the sound coming out of them. In 1925, the plug in the radio was invented by a man named Edward Ted S. Rogers. This is a picture of kids listening to the radio. This was a huge game changer as the old radios had batteries that would die out very quickly. But the new ones had a plug and that meant there was no more needed battery, and it did not need to replace as much. The radio was sold for 150 which is like $2,000 today. By 1929, there were over 85 different radio stations. The stations played things such as news, weather, music, drama programs, sports, broadcast, comedies, and entertainment shows. Here's a quick video of 1920s radio, broadcast video. This is KDKA of the Westinghouse Electric and Manufacturing Company in East Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We shall now broadcast the election returns. <clears throat> I don't want to set the world on fire. I know for certain the one I love. I'm through with flirting. It's you that I'm thinking of. Hey, miss. Behaving, saving my love for you. The 1927 World Series. Will Seymour pitched for the Yankees and Carmen Hill for the Pirates. That was the year the Babe knocked out 60 home runs and the Yankees won the series in four straight games. The automobile. The 1920s saw a growth of the automobile industry. Henry Ford dreamed of making an inexpensive car that almost anyone could afford to buy. Ford decided to apply to a car manufacturing a method of mass production that was being used in some other industries. Ford set up an assembly line that ran from one end of the building to another. At first, the line did not move. The workers walked along it adding parts in the automobile. Later, Ford had the line move itself like a convoyer belt. As the line moved, new parts were added to the frame by workers who remained in one place. By that time, a car reached the end of the line. It had been assembled and was ready to be driven. Ford also used standard parts for cars, which meant that wheels, engines, and bodies were exactly alike for each car. Ford was able to produce the famous Model T, at the price of an average North American could afford. The Tin Lizzie, as the Model T was affectionately called, had a simple box-like design. In 1924, it could be purchased for around $395. Here's a 
Here is a video of the automobile being manufactured. The night continued to come and the work went on, but it was changing and the night seemed farther away than ever. The emphasis altered. Now came production, the genesis of the great phenomenon, American industry. It demanded new ways of thought, a totally new set of values, and they were hard to find, for the values had no roots anymore. Now came the day of the engineers and the assembly line and the interchangeable part, the birth of the most wanted machine, and the explosive discovery that the horseless carriage could be mass-produced into the tin lizzie. This was the first American Industrial Revolution, and its prophet was, of course, Mr. Henry Ford. Henry Ford I, who made cars like rabbits make rabbits, in great abundance, and for the multitude on the famous principle that you could choose any color you liked as long as it was black. He triumphantly represented the twin American ideals, ruthlessness and success. He stood for the great article of faith that said business and government were separate things and never the twain should overlap and that the genius of the businessman should dominate the paltry politician. Contemporary and comrade of Ford was that other article of the buoyant general. Pros and cons of the automobile. Some pros were pleasure trips. The family car made it possible to have a summer cottage, travel long distances for summer vacations, save time, and useful in emergencies. It was also easier for farm children to get through school or for the sick to get to hospitals. Independence and freedom. It made farm life less isolated and lonely. Income for industries. Spin-off industries sprung up across the country. Gasoline, rubber, gas oil, asphalt, and paint, name a few. Some cons. Increase of accidental death, so car crashes, to thousands of people a year. Air pollution. Vehicles would release nitrogen dioxide into the atmosphere. Easier accessibility for criminals. Police reported at least six robberies a night, which thieves made their getaway car. Waste pollution. Car parts would be thrown into landfills. The automobile has probably done more than any other machine to change our way of living. It put North America on wheels. For many people, cars also become statues symbols. Movie idols in the 1920s all drove cars and reinforced the images of the cars represented, which represented freedom and glamour. Cars also gave people a new sense of individualism, but the early models were often an adventure to drive for most people. By 1929, only the United States had more cars per person than Canada. The American giant, Ford, had been manufacturing cars in Canada since 1904, known as the Big Three. These companies controlled our cars manufacturing in North America. By the end of the decade, Canada had become the second largest producer of automobiles in the world after the United States. This is a picture of the automobile in the 1920s. The snowmobile. The snowmobile is one to two seated vehicle that is used when there is quite the amount of snow on the ground. It had either one or two skis at the front to help it stay above. The snow allowing it to be driven. Most of the snowmobiles followed the same design, having skis, fuel tank, engine and seating for the driver. In the 1920s, a prototype snowmobile was sled, which was steered by skis and powered by an airplane propeller.
the early snowmobiles were a little larger as they had to spread the weight across to stay above the snow and not sink all the way to the bottom. In the early 1950s, the event of a smaller, lighter weight engine enabled Joseph Armid Baumler, a Canadian, to develop a snowmobile. In 1959, a commercial, successfully one or two passenger snowmobile was manufactured and marketed. The snowmobile soon became a popular vehicle in North America. The machines have gained wide acceptance and popularity among outdoorsmen for winter, fishing, or hunting purposes. This is a picture of the snowmobile. Snowmobile safaris are made. Here is a video of 1920 snowmobile.
thank you so much for watching our presentation.